Hey guys, I'm Angela and welcome back to Hobby Night. Today, it's Pot Grot versus Stab Grot. That's right. I've gotten my hands on Dominion and I wanted to get started on painting up some of those orc boys and I wanted to go with the meme of the pot grot and the stab grot because they have been very, very popular, but I couldn't decide. So I decided to paint both of them. And my objective with this is to keep it pretty simple. I want to have this be a very beginner guide friendly. We're going to be working primarily, actually exclusively, with contrast paints. But before we begin, I wanted to go ahead and get the models primed up using a little bit of a Zenithal Prime to help myself out and giving myself a little bit of very easy depth. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and first apply some Mechanicus Gray, and then I'm going to do a heavy Zenithal using Wraithbone. This is going to give me a great foundation. Now let's go ahead and get to the hobby table and get painting these adorable little grots. I am incredibly happy with how my Zenithal Prime turned out. The Mechanicus Gray went down very easily, and then the Heavy Zenithal Prime using Wraithbone, I think is going to really help me enhance the effects contrast paint naturally has when basically creating natural highlights and shadows on the model. This way, I can essentially use the paint as GW originally sold it with one single coat, which I actually end up doing through this entire process, and it ends up being really cool and saves me a lot of time. So if you're working with contrast paint, and you're wanting an easy way to enhance it, try a Zenithal Prime. It's really going to improve your game. I really like to create a two-toned effect when I'm working with Xeno flesh tones, and actually most flesh tones, but in particular Xeno flesh tones. And for that, I'm going to do a combination of a contrast color and then a shade over top. And for green skins, my foundation color is always Plague Bearer's Flesh. I really like the sort of yellow green tone it has. It tends to work really well with the shades that I put over top to create a more green flesh tone while giving me some warmth underneath. And I really, really like that. So we're gonna make sure to get both of these little guys coated with some Plague Bearer's Flesh before we move on to a shade to give them a little bit more depth and finish off the flesh tone. For the little pot grot, stirring up his concoction of mystical energies or whatever, we're going to go ahead and use some Bielton Green, which is my classic go-to color when I'm working with some orky flesh. Because I really just like the apple green color tone that it acquires once it's put over top of the Plague Bearer's flesh. It just is such a beautiful green tone. I absolutely love it. But when I was going through and painting him, I was thinking about it, I was like, you know, I think I want to do something a little bit different for the stab grot. I don't want to just go with the same flesh tone. So instead, what I decided to pull out was um, Athenian Camo Shade, which is a color that I used a little bit on my tank, actually, that I had painted up, the Lehman Rust. And I thought this might be a really nice way to get a softer, more subdued olive green skin tone on my orcs. And it worked perfectly. I absolutely love the way that this turns out, and I definitely think I'm going to be using it a lot more going forward on my orcs to sort of help differentiate them and add a little bit of variety into their basically army and color scheme mix-up. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this video. If you're new here and you want to see more content like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon for notifications. And if you've enjoyed this video specifically or hated it, let me know down in the comments and go ahead and hit the like or dislike button. But I also wanted to talk today about my Patreon, where if you want to see behind the scenes content, including photos and vlogs, as well as an opportunity to help contribute to a brand new series that will be happening on the channel sometime soon, where I am going to be building a brand new army. And my patrons are going to have an opportunity to help me choose which army, what colors to pick, and various other things to vote on. So if you're wanting to make sure to get in on that action, go ahead and check out the Patreon link down in the description below. And I believe voting for the new series will be coming up soon, possibly at the end of July. So if you're wanting to get in on the first of all of the polls and everything and really help me pick that army, make sure to go ahead and check out the Patreon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Now let's get back to the video. Now that their flesh is taken care of, I want to go ahead and start working on some of the leathers and cloth that they have on them. And I'm going to start 
using Nasdrag Yellow on the loincloth on the pot grot, as well as the jacket that the stab grot is wearing. I wanted to start with something that was more recessed so that I wasn't having to worry about getting colors past other colors I've already painted. That way, if I have to do any cleanup, which hopefully we'll avoid because we have a Zenithal Prime, we want to try to avoid having to do too much cleanup. But if we do have to do any, it's not going to be hard to get to. Now, once this is done, I'm really happy with it. And I also chose to apply this color to both of the models as opposed to what I'm gonna be doing with some future colors, which will only be going on the pot grot. This adds a little bit of cohesion to the models. And I really like that when I'm building an army up because I want them to be still unique. I want each model to sort of stand out, but I still want them to look like they run together. And this helps me tie them together. Originally, I had thought that maybe I was going to do the pot grots jacket also in Nazdrag yellow, but I decided no, 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 no. He needs a bit more color. He's mystical. He's going to be scavenging a bunch of these pieces of clothing and materials and like all the things that he's putting into his potions from a bunch of different areas. So he should have an eclectic variety of clothing. So I'm going to use some Blood Angels red on his shirt just to add a little bit of variety and make him stand out a little brighter. And I think this works really well, especially since he's the one that got Bielton green as the flesh shade. Um, it just pops really well against that green a little bit more so than I think it would have on the stab grot. For the rickety backpack that my pot grot is carrying all of his very heavy bags and pilfered supplies on, I decided to go with something dark, muted, but still had a little bit of a color tone to it. And for that, I used wild wood. I really like the deep brown color tone of this paint. It works super well. I just use it all the time whenever I'm wanting just a sort of generic brown tone that doesn't stand out, but still is obviously brown. Wild wood is a go-to for me for anything like that. Before I move on to any of the other colors I'm going to be putting on the pot grot, I wanted to go ahead and pull out Basilicanum Gray and use this on all of the metal bits on both grots. This is going to include the cauldron, of course, that our pot grot is stirring up his potion in, all of the recessed metal bits on his backpack, which is why I'm doing the gray now, because I really, really did not want to fuss with doing any cleanup, just like kind of my explanation for the Nasdrag Yellow. So we're going to get that. And we're going to make sure to put this on our stab grot. He has a lot of metal bits, so there's a lot that this color can go on. We're gonna put it on his armor, I'm gonna put it on his weapon, and I'm going to put it on that amazing shield, which I have some plans for to make it stand out a bit more later. But for now, I want this foundation color on there and I want it to dry very thoroughly before I move on to anything else with it. So I'm glad I'm doing it at this step and not a little bit later in the process. Now, let's go ahead and move on to getting some of those bags colored up on our pot grot. While I was building this model, I started planning what I wanted to do for the colors on the Pot Grotz backpack. There's a lot going on and I knew I wanted him, as I said before, to look like he had kind of like pilfered or pillaged some stuff and collected a bunch of materials from a bunch of different locations. So to help emphasize that, I'm going to be using a couple of different colors here to start working on the bags. The first one is going to be Agros Dune. I'm putting this on the clay pots because I thought that the it's not terracotta specifically, but I have seen clay jugs that have that sort of yellowish golden hue to them before. And so I wanted to sort of capture that with the pots on him. For the bags, I'm going to go ahead and use dark oath flesh on a few of them too specifically, I think. And then for the final one, I'm going to go ahead and use pterodon uh, turquoise because I've wanted to have another pop of a brighter color tone in there but I didn't want it to be too warm hued. I didn't want to go with any reds or oranges or yellows because I've already used a lot of that on my pot grot. And I didn't want any greens because I didn't want to detract from his skin. So I thought a blue would be really good and I really like the sort of deep teal color tone that Pterodon Turquoise has. It's just really, really pretty in my opinion. I'm probably gonna try to use it a little bit more, but I just wanted to have that little flare of color on there. Next up, the pot grot has a few actual like organic and well, I mean, I guess the chicken is dead, but 
some living things on him. And so I wanted to go with some more organic, brighter colors. And for the wild carrots and the chicken leg, I decided Griff Hound Orange. Let's go with a bright orange, make them really stand out. Then for the carrot tops and then those weeds or like whatever grasses are sticking out of one of the bags on his back, I decided to pull out orc flesh. That's right, we put some orc flesh on an orc model, just not on his flesh. It's all good. I love that it's there. It's a really bright, beautiful green color tone. It would totally work for an orc. I just, I don't know, it's a little too bright for me, which is weird to hear me say, but it is. So that's gonna go on there. And then I was looking at the chicken leg and I was like, okay, he's got like some tufts of feathers on there. I'm gonna pull out some apothecary white, dab that very gently, just so it gets a little bit of that whitey blue hue to it. And it actually worked way better than I expected. And now it actually looks like a chicken leg and I absolutely love it. I think it's one of my favorite things on the model. I am almost done with all the base coats on my grots, but we have one key color that is missing and that is snake bite leather. I'm gonna use this to wrap up everything else that is leather on both models to basically add some cohesion back in and tie them all together really nicely. Plus, I really just like the look of snake bite leather. It is such a good neutral leather tone that does not add too much additional like red or orange or yellow to a piece. So I thought it would work perfectly here. And I thought it would also really contrast well with the Nasdrag yellow on the stab grot, which is why I decided to go with it as the one that I basically put on both models as opposed to the dark oath flesh, because I did debate that. I'm also going to be using this not only on all of the leather straps, as well as the bags and everything, but any stitching that might be on some of the other bags will get this just to help them stand out a bit more. This little kind of detail work really can emphasize the model when you're looking at it up close. And I just, I don't know, it's a really nice touch that's very easy to do and I just, it's something I've been doing a lot lately and I've really been enjoying pushing my models a little further by doing this. I am so happy with how these guys are turning out. We have a few more colors to get to before we can get the base and get them all finished up. So let's go ahead and get to those before we end this video. It's time now to come back to the shield because I had mentioned that I wanted to do something to emphasize it a little bit more because the Basilicanum Gray, while nice, is not doing a whole lot for me. And the pot grot, sorry, the stab grot in comparison to the pot grot is looking a little bit dull because the pot grot has so much more color on him. So to help fix that, I'm going to use Yondin Yellow on the shield, specifically the lower jaw portion of the shield. Um, I'm going to do something different on the top to add a little bit more color to it, but I really, really like this effect. And then while I was painting this guy, we went, oh right, I need to paint the pot grot's eyes. This will add another way for me to tie in another color that is cohesive between the two of them. So the eyes on the pot grot are also going to get a bit of a Yondin Yellow. The other color for the shield is back to Blood Angels Red. I decided to just go ahead and go with red because honestly, I just like that color on orcs. The stab grot specifically, I don't know, because he's out on the front line, he's actually out there stabbing people and everything like that. I figured he would maybe want a little bit more red coloring on him so he can move a little faster, get out of like under the feet of all of the bigger orcs around him, as well as his enemies, because he's real small and he could get squashed very easily. So this helps him move a lot faster in all of that heavy armor. And I really, really like the effect that this ends up having. I'm doing this on the shield as well as on some of the rivets on his actual armor on his body, because I thought, while the shield was looking really cool, his armor was starting to look a little dull in comparison. So this just added a nice little emphasis of color to tie them together. We're back to the pot grot because we need to take care of what he's actually stirring up in that big old cauldron. And for that, I decided to go with Magos Purple simply because I wanted to have a little bit of purple on the model and I figured this would work well and I didn't want it to be too dark, which is why I didn't use Shyish Purple. I love the effect that this has. It definitely has that sort of mystical energy look to it, the Magos color. Um, possibly because it has the name Magos to it and I just associate that with magic, but it really, really works for me. And then I remembered, oh right, I need to take care of the coals that are actually heating this cauldron up so that his potion can brew. So for that, I pulled out a bit of Black Templar and applied it to the coals beneath the cauldron. And with that, we can now move on to the base. Mm -hmm. 
And after getting both models put together so that they were fully assembled and look amazing, I get them mounted onto their bases and then I'm gonna pull out some Sterling mud and simply apply this pretty liberally over both bases. I'm keeping things pretty simple with these guys. I haven't done a just straight mud ground basing on any of my armies before, so I think for my orcs that might be the direction that I take them. It's simple, it goes down very quickly, and I really like the effect. Sterling mud can get some really cool effects out of it, and you can do a lot of things with dry brushing later to emphasize it if you want to. So there's a lot of versatility there with this very simple texture paint. Now, with the bases all covered, let's go ahead and take a look at the final models. I love them. Look at my little grots. They are amazing. And I can now have them actually versus each other because they're both complete. And you can tell me in the comments which you prefer. Is it the pot grot? Is it the stab grot? I actually still cannot decide because I really like the things that I did on both models. And they're very similar. They are still very cohesive, but they also stand out really distinctly against each other. And I love that. The backpack on the pot grot was a blast to paint because I got to play with a bunch of different colors. I got to make it look like he eluded a bunch of different areas. Whereas like the stab grot ended up getting a lot of like gray tones, but I got to play with some glazing, which I'm super excited for because I think it worked really well. And I'm planning some things for some future videos that really explore that even more because I just really, really like the effect that I got with this. And I've done it a couple times, but like the Basilicanum Gray as a base with some colors going over top of it, it just works super well. And I'm very happy with my results on these grots and everything. And I'm really pleased that my Zenithal Prime worked exactly how I wanted it to and provided me some additional natural highlights and shades for my contrast paints to work with. And it just, created a very easy composition and way to get these guys done quickly, which is great because if I do want to start an orc army, which I'm really, really heavily considering, hence why I picked up Dominion and everything, I wanna be able to get these guys painted up quickly because I know there's lots of them. It is still a horde army and I've had my experience with horde armies and painting them in contrast paint really, really helps get those done a lot faster. So I'm really excited for basically where all this is going. And I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video and watching me paint these guys up. Maybe get some inspiration for your own Dominion box when you get it. And I hope you are looking forward to next week's video where I'll be painting up something from the Stormcast Eternal. I haven't fully decided yet, but I have some ideas and some thoughts on what I might even do with them. So I'm very hyped for that. If you guys wanna check that out, make sure to Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon for notifications, and give this uh, video a thumbs up or thumbs down, depending on how you felt about it. Thank you guys so much, and I want to give an extra special thanks to all my patrons. I have been Angela. I will see you guys next time. You've been watching Hobby Night. Bye.